Oh, shit. Okay, I lost a lot of power again. Are you serious? Yep. Okay, welcome back to uh, our Wednesday afternoon now in progress. <laughs> we had some unscheduled maintenance on uh, Adrian's uh, scoot. It shredded, I mean absolutely shredded a belt. Uh, it looked like spaghetti in there. Uh, I think the belt had been getting really hot, so I don't know if it was the clutch in the rear that was... Uh, maybe dragging or partially seizing the you know the the drive portion not the clutch itself uh, the the rear pulley because uh, it's always been a little warbly noisy sounding and I'm wondering if that was the issue anyway uh, we had fresh belts here uh, and I didn't get into mine to check it but I'm bringing a spare belt with me <laughs> just in case mine goes out that would suck because they both had roughly the same miles uh, you know that one's got about I don't know, 1,500 miles more. Anyway, uh, we were running very late today. Uh, we were hoping to be on the road at 9.30-ish, and that did not happen. Uh, I had to do a tow truck routine with the little CT-125. All right, well, we're doing it. I don't know if you can see him in the rearview mirror there. We're queuing up traffic, and we're towing it. Ooh, uphill, CT-125 pulling another bike uphill in second gear. Did it. Um... But we're going to get on the road. I'm going to swing by my warehouse, uh, pick up a hot spot on the way out because it's on the way. And uh, we're just going to take I-10 and uh, 59 uh, as we start heading up out of town. Uh, and then eventually we're going to end up on little rural highways here and there. But we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, we just need to get rolling. It is hot as hell. I forgot to take my uh, picture of the weather, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. Up and over. Oh, she's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> you can feel it go, whoa, whoa. Hey, there's more weight up top. So, this will be my first ride with this thing with a tunnel bag in the middle of it. And uh, I also put on some knee deflectors or side uh, airfoils here. Daytona side visors, I think is what they call them. And uh, I've had them in the garage for, uh, I don't know, three years, four years. And uh, I got them actually for this scoot for the 2018 Cannonball Run. Uh, but I ended up not going that year and didn't ride this. So uh, they've just been sitting on a shelf. And I thought, hey, perfect opportunity to try them out. And I'm also running with this uh, little lip spoiler up here, a little cheapie I got off of Amazon. We'll see how well it does. I just wanted a little bit of something to kind of uh, soften the noise. Uh, there's not a lot of turbulence at my helmet, but there's a lot of noise uh, in the microphone on the camera. So see how this helps. I'm going to stage up to the middle and take a look. No, we're good. We're clear. So how does the uh, RPM and takeoff on that thing feel with that original clutch in it? Do you notice a difference? Uh, you know, I, I don't notice it yet. Okay. Are you having to wind it up really high before it takes off? Uh, maybe slightly less than okay. before, but that one is fairly noticeable. Okay. Well, that's good because the uh, that other NCY performance pulley and clutch and the whole assembly... Uh, that stiffer spring in that thing would obviously keep your RPM higher all the time, so maybe you'll see some fuel efficiency differences. It's nice having that backrest, huh? Man, I was, good. I was just about to say, this thing's already <laughs> more comfortable than the cup. <laughs> Hell yeah. With the, with the roll bag on the back seat, it's, uh, it's a lumbar support. It's a back support. It's great. Yeah. It's kind of lean back into it. I don't know if I like the placement of this little lip spoiler thing I've got here. It's almost in my eyeballs, and that's the lowest position of it. If it wasn't for this massive bracket right in the middle, it might look better. I don't know. Oh, we could have stopped under the tree here. <laughs> we were searching for shade because it is just 1 o'clock. The sun is straight up, and it's friggin' hot out here. So we're going to jump down here to I-10, head over 59, uh, and just take 59 up to Nacogdoches. We'll make up some time. We, uh, we're running way, way late today. It's 1.30, 1.45 in the afternoon. We're hoping to be about 250 miles away from here by now, but it was not in the cards. 
Yeah, this thing's comfy, man. The air hawk and this uh, backrest. <laughs> Tour this thing across the country. Just better take a spare belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad yours ate shit right before we left town. Uh, it would have been horrible to get halfway between here and Arkansas and it just goes boink. That's why Neil always carries uh, belt and tools and stuff with him. Yeah, that, that's, that's the way to do it. I mean, there's always a certain number of things that can really go wrong. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Yep. What else, what else might go? That's really it. I mean, if the if the engine goes out, you're in trouble. But yeah. it's pretty uh, unlikely yeah, that's, that's these unlikely. things. Yeah, these things are about as bulletproof as they come. I mean, your clutch and your variator are not likely, right? Not really. Uh, variator, you can have problems with your sliders or rollers or something like that to cause you issues. But how that's going to manifest itself is usually with a belt problem. So, belt is your weak link there. And uh, flat tires, you know, that's about it. Are you running into any top speed problems now with that uh, changed clutch, or are you still able to do 65 pretty easy? It, 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 I, I wonder if it's not wind or what, but I think I might have a couple more miles an hour with this one. I, I'm noticing the same with this. I think it's the wind behind us, because I'm only running like half throttle at 65. Tragedy has struck again. Uh, we're just cruising along, nice and easy on the highway at 65, and uh, Adrian just lost power again. So something is causing the belts to shred in here. It could only be, we just put a new clutch in the back of it, new whole drive, pulley, everything, so it can only be the CVT up in the front. And we're in the absolute worst place for this to happen. We could get a mile further up the road, but that ain't gonna happen. We're gonna have to get. Uh, uh, you, we can get down. Uh, well, uh, tow off the back of yours. Uh, let's just tow it off the road. Somewhere. Yeah. And, and we can stay at the shelter pretty much. Yeah. Uh, at least this is a nice wide spot in the highway, but man, we are not getting very far today. Yeah, that's, that's quite a bit of resistance. You know how you brake on, do you? Man? What in the world is causing this? This sucks, man. Okay. Well, I've got my uh, rope in here. Yeah, so we're gonna have to go get it towed out. Uh, I mean, we've got another belt, but that would just get us home, maybe. That sucks. figure out where I can tie off of this thing. I could come around this and just have it facing straight out the back, but where would we, I, we would tow off of your foot peg the same as we did this morning. Yeah, same, same like we did. Man, I feel like a, a shit. You just got this thing from me and now it's got nothing but problems. Oh, I don't dude, understand. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Because we'll we out. rode the hell out of this thing and it never had a single problem. Yeah, we'll figure it out. This sucks. Okay, well, Murphy strikes again. We got about, uh, about, I don't know, 40 miles up the road, 35, 40 miles. We're on the north side of Houston, almost to the woodlands, cruising along 65. Uh, everything's going great, and then suddenly Adrian says, uh-oh, I just lost power again. And uh, we can feel resistance rolling the rear wheel. Uh, so it, it snapped another belt. I don't know what's causing it. It has to be the CVT. Uh, we have a full, fresh clutch, you know, the original OEM clutch in the back of it pulley assembly, everything. It's all uh, new. It had like 500 miles on it. Uh, fresh belt and uh, it just shredded it again. So it's got to be the CVT up in the front end. The uh, NCY uh, CVT is killing it. And I didn't bring another CVT with me, so we're kind of stuck here. Uh, I do have a spare belt, so we might be able to haul it home, uh, but it's not smart to continue further north until we know why this is doing this. Fun, fun. Okay, so we finished our... Uh Roadside repair, or uh, market side repair, whatever you want to call this, shopping center repair. 
on uh, Adrian Scoot. So now he has the original uh, variator, rear pulley, clutch, and a fresh OEM belt in it. So if it does it again, the only common piece left behind is the final drive output shaft going into the, uh, you know, into the, the rear drive uh, and the drive boss on the CVT up front. Those are the only two pieces uh, that were common across uh, the different iterations of this test. So, I don't know. We'll see. We should get uh, more than 45 miles out of a belt, I would hope. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be a really long trip. We can't figure out why his uh, scoot is doing what it's doing. Because we've uh, put 4,000 crazy hard highway miles on those things and you know same miles as this uh the variators were apart on them the same time two years ago and we rode the hell out of them haven't had a single problem until today when his decided to shred two belts back to back we'll find out and now everybody's stopping unfortunately we're going to be in rush hour now in the rain rush hour great until we get past the woodlands So when, when you were uh, you were saying that you know do a checkout ride, what exactly would you be looking for? I mean, that's a good question. Just uh, that it feels normal and you don't feel anything unusual. Unfortunately, we're changing parts, so it's going to feel different. Uh, the uh, your engagement point is going to be lower now instead of up high where it used to be with that other variator, and now uh, you won't have the same top end that you did. But as long as it feels smooth and like it's riding, you know, good, then we should be okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. At least all that warbling noise disappeared, you know. That must have been something with the, uh, that NCY variator was just given up. It's always been a little noisy, uh, and I remember making note of that when we did our uh, Arkansas trip a couple years ago. But I always assumed that it was coming from those rear bearings in the... Uh, the rear pulley, but apparently not, because it still made that same noise even after we changed back to the OEM pulley and clutch. Now, I was thinking it might not be a bad idea for us to put some temperature gauges on these CVTs to keep an eye on them and figure out what normal running temperatures are. Uh, Trail Tech makes a lot of... Uh, off-road gauges and stuff like that for uh, enduro bikes and all kinds of things and I noticed that they have a uh, CVT temperature gauge so that if you put a small probe down in your CVT housing and it has a dedicated gauge you, know, you just mount it wherever you want up on the bars or something so it might give us an indication of uh, how things are behaving on the cannonball if we notice the temperatures are getting really high, really crazy, then uh, maybe we slow down and let the belt cool off or something. Yeah, you got to get a good feel for what it should be. Exactly. you got to establish quote-unquote normal operating parameters and then know where a failure point is. So you almost need data logging or something to uh, yeah. know when it failed, what temperature, how long it was running at that temperature before it shit the bed. So I guess uh, we've both got a little bit of CVT tuning to do on these uh, before the Cannonball next year. Uh, I've had problems with these uh, Dr. Pulley sliders turning sideways in this variator. They are right now, uh, so it doesn't have real good low end power, but it doesn't seem to affect the, uh, the top speed of the belt or anything like that. It still runs just fine. Uh, I think a stiffer rear spring will fix that. So I want to go up about 20% on the rear spring. Um, so maybe we need to get a Dr. Pulley variator for that one instead of this NCY because the NCY just didn't last. And the factory variator, factory clutch, factory everything works just fine with sliders in it. Uh, the Dr. Pulley sliders, it gives you about four miles an hour top speed, but it caps out around 67 uh, where uh, the performance variators definitely, you know, give you more oomph. Yeah, this thing definitely catches sooner. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's going to engage way lower. It just won't have the legs up top like the uh, NCY did. You'll probably feel yourself bouncing off the rev limiter about 63, 64. So you want to stay on this or you want to go uh, back roads? Uh, I'll up to you. It's up, up to you, man. Uh, if we want to do back roads, we're turning right in a quarter mile. If we want to go straight on, we go straight on. Okay. Straight, straight. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Go ahead. Sorry. Get up. I should have got. Nope, that's but, uh, right. Let's take the back roads, Dave. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna hang. Uh, getting two different options here. We either turn right, coming up at this next major intersection, or we go two miles. I say we go two miles and then we'll turn okay. right. Yeah. yeah, I mean we're not gonna we're we're not gonna make uh, we're not gonna make it tonight anyway, right? So. Nah, well, I mean if if the weather clears and we feel like just crushing, we could, but at 60, 63 miles an hour, it's gonna take us uh, six more hours. After dark, and actually we're at 59. Yeah, agreed, because there's a lot less wildlife and yeah. nonsense to deal with, yeah. Got a dog on the right. Yeah, I see him. He's hightailing out. That's a coyote. That's not a dog. What? Yeah, that was a coyote. Okay, I'm gonna come around here. Go ahead, you go on. On your left. Yep. Back on 59, isn't it? Yep. At least we skipped the uh, rain and the... Let's just stay here. Yep, okay. At least we skipped the rain and the bullshit. Crush the valve. Yep. This, uh, this belt on the stress test. There you go. Yeah, there's a rainbow ahead of us. You see it? Yeah, I just saw it. Yeah. And lightning just came down out of it. Man, I wish we would have had that camera recording uh, when we were going through New Mexico and we were looking over toward those mountains and there was that double rainbow and yeah. three lightning strikes came down right through the middle of it. Oh. I looked down at my camera and the battery was dead. I was so pissed.
hanging back there? Yep, just uh, hanging back. I'm hypermiling a little bit to see if I can keep the uh, fuel economy above 107. Oh shit, I think you got me beat. I'm 101 right now. Well, you were probably losing quite a bit with that belt taking uh, so much heat. No, because it was, uh, it's been dropping. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, because I was uh, about 110. Oh, okay, okay. Well, and then, and then now, I guess it's dropping down. Yeah. Well, a taller variator profile in the front definitely lowers engine RPM, so you're not banging off that rev limiter. Yeah. Cracker Barrel beer and chicken. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> I wonder if we should stop. If we do, we're going to be so tired we won't want to ride anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keep going. Beer and chicken, hell yeah, man, I could do that. Uh, but it's going over here. Two in a row. Wanna get drinks or anything here or just hit it? Now let's hit it and Adam. Okay. I'm good with that. I think it's dark. Let's uh before everything shuts down, let's get something to eat. Yeah. Well we're still in Texas, I don't think things are gonna shut down. <laughs> Not like the cannonball. Okay, good morning all. It is uh Thursday morning now. Uh Adrian and I had uh, variator issues on that PCX uh, twice yesterday. It ate two belts. Uh, but we reverted everything to the factory variator, uh, OEM uh, Honda parts on the front pulley variator portion as well as the rear pulley and clutch and all that. It's all 100% back to stock now with a fresh belt. And uh, it crushed down... Uh, uh, we're turning right? Yeah, we're turning right. Um, we got 250 miles or something out of it without it eating another belt, so we think uh, it was the variator that was causing the problem. Where is it wanting us to go now? No, it's saying I-20 West. We're having dual of the GPS's here. I think we'll just get on I-20 for a minute, or I'm not sure what it's doing here, Adrian. Okay, yeah. Actually, I think it's telling us to do a UE. Yeah, it's a UE. Crap. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry everybody. We're having uh, routing difficulties with the uh, competing GPSs, and everyone always asks me, why do you run two GPSs? This is why, because they uh, very frequently have differing opinions. Could look at a paper map, and that would be a little more deterministic. So the plan today is uh, we're going to go meet up with Neil. He is in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. He stayed at a hotel last night as well. Uh, we were going to keep on trucking up there, but it was another four hours, 200 and something miles. And we just decided it wasn't worth it because uh, riding at night is a little too dangerous and we wouldn't have been getting in until almost 1 a.m. So, nah, skip. So we grabbed a cheap hotel here, the Quality Inn, or the Not-So-Quality Inn. Uh, but it was cheap and air conditioning was cold, so that's all right. And uh, just keep on going straight, Adrian. Okay, gotcha. Truck jumped in between the middle of us. Uh, so we're going to ride for about four hours, get up there to Hot Springs and meet up with Neil. And then from there, we're going to continue all the way up to Peebley, Missouri, we think. Uh, we should be able to knock it all out in one day. It's, you know, 500 miles and change, so it shouldn't be too bad. Anyway, temperature's nice this morning. It's about 76, some mid-70s. Very humid. We walked outside and everything started uh, sweating and condensing right away. But, uh, apparently there's a heat advisory today. We are going to be uh, riding in some real hot weather. But uh, as long as we're moving, it's not too bad. Texarkana, USA. 
Got to get that good southern drawl in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's hillbillies from two different states. So this must be Arkansas as we're passing through here. Haven't seen the sign yet. Oh, there it is. Welcome to Arkansas. Or if you're in Kansas, it's Arkansas. And they're very finicky about that. So he's coming to check out probably. Okay then. We found him. <sighs> Ready to stand up and stretch my legs. Yeah. <laughs> look at Oh, look at his mount that he set up. He's got it front and center. I like that. Built him a little mount right off the windshield mount. That's slick. He's even got a glare shield on it. Check it out. <laughs> Nicely done, sir. Cool. You just built a mount coming right off the windshield frame. That's pretty slick. Slick. I like your GPS mount. Looks good. Well, I had it on the car. Uh -huh. Off to the side. Yeah, yeah. Front and center is much better. Cool. Okay, so we met up with Neil, and uh, he had just checked out and went over to get coffee in his thermos and came back, and here we were. So we're going to roll over now to uh, House of Pancakes or uh, some breakfast spot that he just found and uh, get a little coffee and some food and catch up, and then uh, we're going to hit the road, head north. Hopefully we can make it all in one shot today. We'll see. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're, I don't know if you can see us in the camera or the mirror here. Uh, we finished breakfast. We stopped at that first place, and they had like a 35-minute wait, and we said, uh-uh. So we rode down the road over here to the Waffle House. <laughs> Got sat down and ate right away. So now we're going to hit the road on uh, Highway 7, I guess it is. Uh, we'll get a few miles down the road, and Adrian and I will stop off for fuel. I've still got three dots. Adrian said he's down to one dot, uh, and Neil is carrying a huge uh, fuel cell on his, so he's got lots of fuel. But we'll uh, we'll fill up the tanks, and we think we're only going to do about three or four hours today. We're not going to ride all the way up uh, to the track in Missouri. We're going to just get into, I guess, southern Missouri and hang out camp up tonight and relax instead of pushing real hard today so we're gassed up I put uh, the super in this one uh, ethanol free they're 91 back there at that pump was ethanol free so give it a try <laughs> that's a 360 camera yeah so it's recording front and back I don't have it hooked up to a power supply, so it's going to run dry after about 30 or 45 minutes. It's okay. you'd run over a piece of shit in the road. No. I want to go back and get it if we can find it. Uh, it, it came dude, unplugged. A... I went, it came unscrewed, apparently. Okay, uh, look at It's going to be right on the fucking shoulder on the right-hand side. Right? Yeah, maybe you guys 15. can wait here if you want. I'm going to go down here and see if I find it on the road. No, I'll, I'll go with you, man. Right there, right there. Yep, 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 That's it. Stopping, stopping, stopping. Oh yeah, it's freaking toast. And it's still recording! No, I doubt it. I doubt it, but... He said it's still recording. Alright, everybody. I was rolling along. 
and uh, I kept looking back, you know, just making sure that my 360 camera was back on the bike. Uh, and I don't know, I went about five miles without uh, glancing back at it and uh, it had come loose. And here it is on the side of the road, destroyed and still recording. Hello. It can't, I can't stand out here in the road. Uh, my carbon fiber pole apparently vibrated apart. It has two telescoping sections in it. And uh, the telescoping section just unscrewed itself and the thing took a dirt nap on the road. So it is mangulated. Still recording. It, it took a spill at 60. So, but it's still recording. I'm going to wipe off the lens. Lenses are toast. So yeah, that lens is completely toast. That one's toast. But it's still recording. It's crazy. So hopefully I'm going to see what the, the fix is uh, with uh, the GoPro Plus uh, subscription. And I'll get this thing replaced because it's a 400 and something dollar camera. Night, night. It's toast. It's totally f***ed. Oh, this side. Oh, no, no. The lenses are toast. So... No, no, the lens. Yeah, yeah. But it was still recording this whole time. So, uh... Hey, yeah, you've got video of it then. I'm going to send it in to uh, GoPro Plus and have it replaced. It's a $400 camera. It, the, uh... It had like a telescoping screw thing and it just vibrated loose, I guess. Bastard. Oh, well. I'm glad I looked back and saw it when I did. Yeah. The tribulations of being a YouTuber. Huh? That's it. <laughs> I'm glad I uh, looked back right when I did. So chances are the little uh, telescoping screw. Yeah, here, here's the. Uh, here I found the uh, the thing. So yeah, it just unscrewed itself and screwed me in the process. Oh well. Yeah, I'm so glad I looked back right then because, I mean, God knows where we would have been. It would have been impossible to find. Should have said something, but, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you looked back and we caught it yeah. before. We... Well, and if it had bounced one more time and ended up off the side over here in the grass, wouldn't have seen it. Would not yeah, have seen it. Yeah, if it would have bounced off into the grass, I don't think yeah, we'd have come Yeah, just past it. the horizon line here, and there's no way to find that. Okay. I guess maybe put an air tag or something on it next time. Ugh. So hopefully my uh, GoPro Plus warranty is still up to date, and <laughs> if not, shit, four hundred dollars down the toilet. Let's do it. Clear. And it. The reason that I, I looked back to check if the camera was there is I was going over it in my head thinking about, okay, so what kind of camera angles do I want to capture during the cannonball? So I was thinking about, okay, if I had a 360 camera mounted up high, kind of above my head, behind the top box, looking forward, uh, then that would capture everything on the road. Yeah. And then I need my helmet camera, and then I was thinking maybe another 360 up here in the front. That way I could capture any angle I wanted, but... Uh, I was thinking of, okay, where would I put it in the front? And I'm looking down, and then I looked over in my side mirror and did this, and I didn't see the camera anymore. Like, oh, shit. Now I'm going to need two 360 cameras. Run off the fucking road. <laughs> oh, that sucked.
nice over there. I don't know, he was just pointing at that house. I said, it's nice over there. What river is this? It's big. I didn't either. Big bump, oh yeah. Kidney killer. Riverside Pizza Company. Mm -hmm. Junction 56, I don't even know where we are. I'm not paying attention. Mountain Home is still ahead of us, so we're not there yet. Hey, got another motorcycle in front of us. Line, uh, when we got on this road said use caution crooked and steep next 20 miles nice uh, what is it uh, the sign when we got onto this road said crooked and steep next 20 miles cool. steep I don't know it just said crooked and steep so that means lots of hills lots of curves this up and down up and down I'm still getting 114.2 on this thing Man. I don't think I'm quite, yeah I'm not, probably over 100 but I've got it on mileage now I have to. yeah There is sharp. Sharp downhill and off camber. Good stuff. Fading left, that's a good one. Yep, he was pulling over. Okay. He's looking at something. I think he lost something or something happened. So I'm looking down in his uh, lower something there. Your Took a bug. Huh? Took a bug, huh? Took a bug, man. <laughs> no. See that bird? 
Yeah, I thought you were going to collect him there for a minute. Big wingspan, man. That was like an eight foot wingspan on that thing. It was huge. He's trying. Well, I thought he was going to poop up. Yeah, that's what Adrian said. He's going to shit on us. Yep. Clear. This is gorgeous out here, man. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Missouri, just in the Missouri. Okay, well, we got a junkyard at the street, and it's not any junkyard, it's a lawnmower junkyard. All right, need a riding mower? Always wanted one of those. Never had the yard for it. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm having cannonball flashbacks, but we're on the wrong bikes. Okay. I said I'm having cannonball flashbacks, but we're on the wrong bikes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what was that section we went through? I think it might have been Kansas. We're just farms and rolling hills and... No, we weren't ever that far south in Kansas. It was uh, Illinois or... Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was one of the first few days. Long, straight stretches. Yeah. I mean, just, it was up and down and there were yeah. just farms everywhere. Yeah, nothing but farmland, yeah. Yeah. I think that was Illinois. Illinois, yeah. It was pretty. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting some good use out of these uh, toe straps. <laughs> the CVT and the belt are fine in it this time, uh, but he ran out of fuel. And uh, I'm gonna hook up the toe strap again. This is how we're doing it. If he needs to release it, he just steps his heel off of that and it'll unravel. I don't think these toe straps were designed with this in mind, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's worked three times now, so. PCX 150 pulling another PCX up about a 15 to 17% grade here. So we're doing 33, 34, not bad. I'm just maintaining about half throttle. 